Hi everyone, Varuma Hocha over here. Um, this is going to be the start of a new series that I'm planning to make. Essentially, what it's going to be is just um, uh, like a, a stream of consciousness, essentially. It's not going to be any particular set topic. I'm just kind of going to ramble for like however long I record for and basically cut it up into little snippets, little pieces of ideas that I have around jiu-jitsu. And it's just going to be... You're basically going to get exposure to how I think about jiu-jitsu and this exercise is good for me because I'm going to come up with cool ideas on the spot and you're going to be witness to that. And um, yes, yeah, so that's kind of it. So I had, I did have a topic. Normally I don't want to have a topic, but I do want to have a topic for today just to um, just to almost inspire me a little bit. So I was talking this, I was talking about this with some training partners the other day and I was talking about how people don't ever really use this strategy and I didn't steal it from other industries but it is used in other industries but the idea of creating simulations in your head in order to improve your jiu-jitsu so um so one thing that I like to do a lot is I like to I talk a lot about visualizing with my friends and things like that but I people think oh you're just visualizing like you're preparing for the comp oh yes that's good like you're gonna get motivation you're gonna like you're gonna be able to feel your you're gonna be able to feel your presence in the spot say you want to compete at worlds or something like that I'm not necessarily talking about that, but I'm talking more for the purposes of, uh, although I do do that quite a fair bit, I'm talking about more about the purposes of running simulations and visualizing in your head in order to improve your jiu-jitsu and actually to essentially gain time on the mat without having to be on the mat. And I think this is very useful if you're at a job where like you're not able to train, but you kind of want to, but you do want to train and you're kind of running on autopilot, your job isn't that hard. So you kind of just want to, like, you just want, you have freedom of thought in your job and you just want to get better at jiu-jitsu. So um, essentially what I do is when I have rounds in the gym, so let's say I have a training partner that's testing me in a particular position, or maybe I just have a cool idea. I wrote something down and um, and it's like, oh, fuck, this sounds really mad. Like, I really, I really want to test this out. What I do, I essentially roll with a training partner or a variety of training partners with that idea or concept or or what do you call it tactic in my head and I I essentially just play that tactic out so basically I imagine rolling in my head against a partner in specific spots and I'm testing out their reactions and I'm basically creating a simulation and seeing if what they're doing beats what I'm doing so then I can figure out the particular context in which my tactic strategy concept whatever it may be is actually effective in particular situations and then when I have a good idea it's essentially one that goes across many many different situations is easier to do and I could get anyone to do it. I could get a white belt on day one to do it or I can tell a black belt world champion to do it and then it'll improve their game so um essentially so what I do so let's say I take a position so let's say it's a specific way of applying my cross collar grip okay so what I do I have I think about this particular way of doing a cross collar grip and then I imagine, so let's say I'm on bottom, I'm in guard, it's a particular type of frame that I'm doing. Okay, so I have someone, and I imagine someone passing me, okay, and I test out this cross collar frame, and then basically I'm running a simulation in my mind that basically it tests out if my, if my theory is valid or not, and I have to keep myself honest, I can't just be like Superman in my dreams and, you know, think I'm going to kill everyone, but I test it out, I'm like, oh fuck, maybe it would work there, and I feel the position almost in my head, it's a very esoteric idea, but you're trying to like, you hear about this and like, I'm not, I'm not claiming anything around manifestation, but um, we hear this a lot with, um, with people when they talk about manifestation, if anyone's seen the documentary The Secret, Essentially, you talk about feeling things and being in the moment, literally, and just like what you want to do. You want to. We're gonna have a practical application for this, rather than like woo wooing our way into fucking winning our rounds or winning the world championship or whatever. So you envision yourself doing this, and you literally feel the position. You feel the pressures on your hand. You feel the pressure of them, or the non-pressure, or the movement, or the type of movement, or the angles, or the techniques that they're doing, and you visualize how your thing matches up against it. So. I have my collar grip that I visualize, so say I want to test it against a variety of different type of opponents, so I visualize one opponent pressing into it, I visualize one opponent cutting an angle, I visualize one opponent stepping back and moving around, and essentially I run the simulation of why my one tactic against multiple different um, defense or attack strategies against me, and essentially I can test without actually being on the map what I want to do, and this just has, I think this has just ridiculous benefits this is 
this is something that I use personally, and I think it's why I've I've progressed so much in a short time, especially recently in my training. Like I've been doing this, I've been stepping it up to like the next degree. Like, the, and there's extra things you can do about this. You can ask like particular questions, and I have a like a questionnaire system that I use for myself. And I use that to like essentially shape my game and kind of come to conclusions on particular topics. And then essentially, like what you're doing, you're when you're doing this, you're making sure that your ideas are not bullshit, okay? And you're also you're fast forwarding the training process because now it's like, okay, I don't have to test out these four different things in training to make sure to find out what's the best one. You can essentially just run it in your head, and you're going to have to do it like you're going to have to test it out in real life at least one or two times. But the idea is to shorten that process, so you don't have to test it out for three days. You have to, and then you have to test it out for one or two rounds, or maybe three rounds. And now it's like now your improvement, your like your reiteration cycle is so much faster and so much less physically, like physically consume, like energy consuming, and it's it it is more mentally taxing. I'll, I will say that. But you you can do it literally anywhere in the world. So if you're in the fucking Sahara Desert, you can you can still get better at Jiu Jitsu by just thinking about how your strategies and your tactics, concepts, whatever it is, match up against other different styles or attack strategies or defense strategies or what else. You're literally just you're visualizing and you're playing. You're essentially playing out the situation. You you can essentially feel yourself in the round. Okay, you can feel like for me, I kind of get to the point where I feel myself where I'm tired and I'm really immersed in the moment. And this essentially like um. It's a, uh, it. I'm trying to find the words here, but it just it shortens the uh, the the improvement cycle, the reiteration or critical feedback loop cycle. It shortens that, and you're just able to when you visualize it. So okay, I should actually get into how to visualize for this. So essentially, you just want to do something that helps. So I think if you're a beginner and you're visualizing and you're kind of like you're not you're not super good at this yet, I would say. Imagine yourself, your game, against someone in your class, and then just visualize you rolling against them without even trying to test anything yet. And then as you get more familiar with how you with how you visualize against them, now you start testing out different strategies, and you want to be able to visualize yourself against many different opponents over a longer period of time. But start off just visualizing yourself just rolling. Just visualize your rolls, okay? You want to visualize your point of view and them on top of you or you on top of them. You're passing or you're playing guard. You just visualize it around, you play it out, and then eventually you're just like, okay, fuck, here's a mistake, and then you correct that mistake. And then that's essentially what I what you're doing. This is essentially what I'm talking about on a minor scale. And then you scale this up where you can just test out specific things against different multiple opponents. Like I don't want to say multiple opponents at a time because you're not fucking fighting four people at once, but essentially you kinda you can you can rapidly kinda go through the different types of opponents you're gonna be having. It helps if you have a higher IQ for this. Um you can still do it if you have a lower IQ. It's just the the processing power makes it a little more. If you don't have as much processing power, it's going to be harder to do this faster. But if you do have a higher IQ, then fucking fantastic. That's great. Um, uh, but um, that's that's essentially the idea. So you 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 visualize yourself rolling against someone, and then eventually, what you want to be able to do, you want to be able to look at the top level black belts, and be like. Okay, and so is it? You want to look at the top level black belts. You want to be able to watch their tape, then visualize them. So you got to like see. You got to research how tall they are, how like, how much they weigh in and out of camp, things like that. And then essentially, you can visualize yourself rolling against them, and you can actually test if your thing is working or not because you've got this reference history of visualizing and comparing it to your real rounds, making sure that's accurate. And then you can, I'd say you can get if you're pretty high level at this, you can get to like a seventy or eighty percent like accuracy if you're if you're. If you're visualizing rolling with someone that you've never actually rolled before, so that's a very interesting concept. This is just my theory, and I've kind of te- I've kind of tested it out a few times before, and I think it's very accurate. But um, but yeah, so that's essentially what I'm getting at. Just try and try and just you you take one thing that you want to test. Just say one thing. Say a collar grip. Say a pass that you want to do. Okay, this is going to be great for beginners. Okay, so let's say you want to test a pass. Say you want to test out your your knee cut from Delhi Hebo. Of course, I choose that one. It's my favorite technique. But um, your knee cut from Delahivo. Okay, what you do, you visualize yourself on top of Delahivo. Okay, and you visualize doing your knee cut. Okay, it helps you. You can, of course, I reference solo drilling. You can solo drill this a little bit just to get familiar with the movement and get familiar with your own body. But um, but after that, if you're looking to visualize and improve, you try and do it in training, and then you're gonna eventually run into some roadblocks in training. Okay. 
So you're going to run to a roadblock. And then what you can do, you can take that pass and outside of training, you can visualize yourself on top trying to do it. And then you just start playing out in your mind the different corrections you could have potentially made. So you could have potentially, say the guy bumped you, you could have potentially tilted your hip a little bit to the left or a little bit to the right. Or you could have thrown your hips a little higher or a little lower. Or you could have grabbed the sleeve a little bit harder. And you essentially test out different... You're essentially, you're, you're throwing shit at the wall, but this is the most educated you can throw your shit at the wall. Like, even science is throwing shit at the wall. It's just a hypothesis, and you test it. So it's, um... So you're doing an educated trial and error, and as you get better over time, and you have a better intuition, you'll be able to develop your trial and error. Your throwing shit at the wall will be pretty accurate over a longer period of time. Um, so you so you could say, it for Del so as I was referencing my example before, you can... Stay on top in Delhi here, but you test your pass. So let's say there's a there's a random you're a blue belt and there's some random brown belt at the gym. You test your pass, it doesn't work in training, and then you visualize what happened after training. You take that exact recount in the memory of what happened. You want to have a strong emotional connection to it. Okay? I'm a big believer in using ego in training. I think you gotta have it I think you gotta have it around learning and improving, but also I, I don't think it hurts at the start, especially to have your ego around wanting to beat people's asses. I think that's fucking perfectly fine. I think that leave you leave your ego at the door is bullshit, I think you should have an ego, but it should be placed in somewhere productive, I don't think, I think you should completely get rid of it, otherwise you'll just be, like, you, you would have no, no motivation to actually do anything if you didn't have an ego, but, um, or maybe not no motivation to do anything, I'll have to research that more, but more, no motivation to actually want to do better in training, but, um, but, yeah, so you test out your passing, you, you say it didn't work, your blue belt didn't work on this brown, you're like, fuck, Okay, you go home and you visualize it. You think it's an you, so you're essentially doing what people call think about it, but you're thinking about it in a much more productive way rather than just fucking sobbing in the car, like for fucking no reason. Be like I can't pass this brown belt. What you do, you visualize. So you think about it. I'm gonna replace visualize and think about it. It's the same thing essentially. You think about it, and we think it, and like you want to be able to have a vivid like it's your memory is valuable. It, that is the only downside of it. But you want to just remember that. If you want to just do it, like use the 80-20 rule. Just remember the key moments. So remember the 20% that achieved the 80% of the result. So, um, so yeah, you're using the pass and you're just like, okay, fuck, I had no success. And you're just like, and then you test out little things. So then it's like, so then it's like, okay, what if I tilt my hip a little bit here? And then you can like, so you play that out in your mind. And then once you play out that little correction in your mind, you go and test it in training. And then once you test it in training, you get the accurate feedback. You can tell if your if your visualization is bullshit or if it's real or if it's only five percent accurate or if it's fifty percent accurate or if it's eighty percent accurate. You can do that. You test it out, and then you're getting your you've essentially got two critical feedback loops now for all my fucking like systems and like software engineer nerds. Um, you've essentially got two critical feedback. So you got a critical feedback on your on your on your visualization process, and you got a uh, critical feedback on your actual like your on your knee cut. So then you compare those two and you reiterate and then you get better at the visualization process and eventually you're going to be able to you're going to be able to visualize the corrections in your mind and make them accurate to training. That's essentially the point I was going to do. fucking took me a long time to get there. But um yeah, so that's it. So you're going to take the you're going to you're basically going to be working on simultaneously your visualization and your technical jiu-jitsu corrections and you're going to compare them both at the same time, see if they're accurate and see if they sync up to actual rolling. And then from there, you're just going to be able to your progress is going to sit high rocking, especially if you're just fucking, like, if you're just, if you're a daydreamer, if you're a fucking ADHD type of person, like, uh, like, I, I'm not sure if I've actually got it, but I've got a lot of the symptomology, like, my fucking mind goes all over the place, and a lot of people in jiu-jitsu are like that, too. Um, just, uh, you're going to be able to, you're going to be able to progress, like, super fast, and if, and if you're, if you're not as ADHD as certain people, you're going to, like, you're going to, it's, it might be a little bit hard, I'm not too sure, honestly. It might be a little bit hard to visualize, but it does take a strong, like, mental effort. This is this is li literally mental jiu-jitsu. And it's just like, this is the shit that no one talks about. This is the, And I guarantee you, the highest level guys, they they probably... I can imagine they do this, like, um, like subconsciously. They can't really articulate the process um, as well as they could. They're just like, oh, I think about it, and then I go back and train. And it's just like... You know, we want a natural process because, you know, you want the fucking, the, in my ideal world, I want to be able to make, like, fucking Joe Blow or even, like, a bum. Like, someone who's just, like, 
someone who can't do anything athletically be able to win a world championship. I think that's the ultimate test of knowledge and skill, or maybe not even knowledge and skill, but queuing even. And I think that's a very powerful thing, and I think, and I think that's possible. I, I, have th- I have several theories around this, but let's let's not get into that today. But um, but yeah. So you want to be able to visualize, compare your rounds, compare your visualization process to your rounds, and the corrections you thought about in your visualization process essentially blend them together and test it out in the rounds and you come back and you have a critical feedback loop and you're effectively like if you think about it you're doing the scientific method you have a hypothesis you test it out you come back you collect the data and then you come to a new hypothesis and it's the same thing over and over again i think that's how everyone should train like um like my coach marillo says um i fucking love that guy um he um he talks about he talks about every round being a specific training and that's what it should be um, I think once you've gone to a certain point, I think once you've had enough exposure to jiu-jitsu, you kind of understand how how the game works, and you understand that if you grab here, the guy's going to grab here, or they have these potential seven options, four options, whatever the hell it may be. Yeah, they have these potential options, and you kind of like, you can just visualize what's going to happen, and it's like, and there's a bunch of other, and there's a bunch of other subconscious benefits you'll get from it too. I can go into that another fucking time. And honestly, I kind of don't want to. It's a little bit secret, if I'm being honest. But um, uh, but yeah, there's so many, there's so many benefits to it, and it's just like, yeah, your your fucking your jiu-jitsu progress skyrockets. So it's like, and man, you can do this without like fucking any complicated equipment. You can just do this your fucking mind, and it's just like, you can. It's a skill. You can train it. So even if you don't have the natural talent the natural ability, it's, it's literally mental jiu-jitsu, you can just, you can train this skill, and then this will help your actual jiu-jitsu get better, you'll become, sorry, you'll become, from my experience, because you're visualizing, and you're contracting the muscles at the same time, you're imagining your body colliding with their body, or slipping past their body, whatever it may be, you're recreating the sensations that you have in the round, you're, you're thinking the same thing that you're thinking in the round, so then you correct your live thinking in the, yeah, how can I forget this? You correct because you're you're re you're essentially reenacting a role. You you can like you can correct your thinking. Your thinking. Okay, so you're thinking. Okay, I should go here and do this thing. You're correcting your thinking about jiu jitsu. You're just like, oh no, actually, it's gonna for it's gonna force you to have like further critical feedback loops on your system. You're just like, oh my god, this actual perception of this position was totally wrong. I'm gonna have to fix that up. And then your whole view of jiu jitsu changes. And there's just like, now I'm starting to think there's limitless benefits to this. Like this is just fucking nonsense. Like it's it's absolute it's absolutely ludicrous. And it's just like you know you fucking just you do your moves, you practice them. You you're, okay, so now you're having multiple critical feedback loops at the same time, but they all feed into each other. So it's not actually complicating your mind. You're just it's almost effortlessly getting better. And this I think this is shit that's so like this is the undiscovered market in jiu-jitsu. This is like the fucking this is like Tesla and fucking COVID, bro. This is this shit is like your fucking your your jiu-jitsu, like your stock for lack of a for lack of a better term is fucking referencing fine heads earlier. But like your your like I don't want to use that term. Your jiu-jitsu brain and your jiu-jitsu body is gonna level up. You're gonna have like you're gonna be like I'm sounding like a fucking guru here, but you're gonna be you're gonna be in touch with your body. You're gonna be your mind is gonna be more switched on to rounds because you're gonna be able to because you're visualizing these sensations. You're gonna become familiar. Oh, that's another fucking gem. So I'm just reading my own work now. Um, yeah, you're gonna be visualizing the sensations. Then when the sensations are slightly different in the round, you're gonna be like, "Fuck, this is something different." You're gonna be able to make note of it. You can ask your training partner, "Hey, bro, how did you fucking do that?" Or what did you do there? That was really interesting. Whether it was shit or good, it doesn't really matter. You're just going to gain feedback. And you're going to be able to improve just fucking, like, an infinite amount. It's fucking ridiculous. And I think this is how, like... I think this is how people should think. I think this is a higher level of thinking. I think there's so much more levels to this thinking. But this is just one thing you can do that doesn't really take anything extra out of your day. You can do it on the fucking bus home from work. You can do it while you're just doing bullshit. You can do it while you're cooking. You can do it while you're cleaning. Um, spoiler, I'm not... I'm not responsible if you fuck up your cooking, but if you if you do this, make sure to what I do, do what I do. Put a timer on if you're if you're cooking something, but I rarely cook, so I don't know what I'm talking about there. But um, side sidetrack, sidetrack. But um, but yeah, there's there's just so much like there's so much upside here, and there's no downside. The downside is that you get extra data. It's like okay, it may be a little harder to sort out, but over time you're gonna get better. This is another gem for you. You wanna learn how to categorize your information, and then you wanna like. And pe- different people, I think, are going to have different categorizations because they're going to view jiu-jitsu differently. People are going to, like, 
one thing that comes into it is terminology. People's terminology is different, or maybe the way people feel positions are slightly different, and that could be because of body differences. That could be be because of like creative or mental differences. There's so many different like avenues you can go here, and it's good for everyone. Like I can't think of a person this would be bad for, unless like this. This is especially for the over analyzer. This is a fucking weapon. If you're like me and you just can't stop thinking about it, you just go to bed like fucking pissed off. Sometimes you're just like, "What the fuck is this?" I remember several nights many many years ago and I'll just get pissed off and I'll just be thinking about it but like I didn't have this process of actually improving from it I'll just be like fuck this keeps happening I'll get pissed off and angry and frustrated I'll be like 16 17 I'm like why the fuck are these people passing me but little did I know that I had like a fucking weapon that I could just actually use this tool to help like just test things out and like I have and you can just use your intuition and you know, there's se there's ways that you can weaponize your intuition. I'm not going to get into that here because that's kind of my secret weapon that I don't really want to give anyone, uh, unless you're my close training partner or friend, or you, or maybe if you if you ask and I feel like and I want a good day, probably not though. But um, uh, but this is like, this is just ridiculous. Like I think I mean, there's so much upside here. There is. There's potential for you to explore creative ideas without having to, like, this is training without training. Like, this is, like, you know, like, what if athletes could train fucking seven hours a day? I think this is the closest you can to get to it right now, and I think it's even better because it's not physically taxing. You're not having fucking physical fatigue cloud your decision making. You're just on it. Like, fucking worst case takes, not take some coffee, drink some coffee, you have a little bit of fucking caffeine in your system, your mind just gets fucking focused and you're ready to go. You know, or you get G'd up and you start thinking of crazy shit that could potentially work or not work, but you're testing things out. And I think it can ultimately make jiu-jitsu more fun, because if you have a positive attitude towards it, and you're just like, oh my god, I'm getting to work on my jiu-jitsu, I love this so much. And if you truly love jiu-jitsu, I think you'll do this because it's just something that benefits, and it's fun. You're thinking about jiu-jitsu, you're not just watching some matches being like, I really want to do jiu-jitsu, but I can't do jiu-jitsu. This is doing jiu-jitsu without doing jiu-jitsu. It's the hack if you're the fucking guy that's at work that just wants to train or you're a fucking pro guy and you're just like your body is beat up or you're on a west or, or a west week you're on a rest week or a deload week and you're fucking you want to train but you know that you can't i think this is fucking perfect like this is or it's like or you're just on maybe just one time you're, you're just a dude maybe you're just a dude that wants to improve maybe you're just the maybe you want to do it for competitive reasons i think this works out for everyone this is like a, a fucking one-stop hack that doesn't really take that it doesn't take effort, it takes commitment, those are two different things. This isn't a high, like, energy-consuming activity, although it can be if you're doing it a lot and you're doing it very intensely, kind of how I do. I kind of, I almost fall asleep after doing it, I get into it so much. But, um, or sometimes I get really energized from it because I find something new, like my fucking brain just goes, whoa, I found this new thing, I get excited and tell my friends about it. But, um, but yeah, this is, this is something fucking, like, I think, I think this is, I think this is one of those things where it's the equalizer. You're beating people on, men, uh, on like mental jiu-jitsu or mentality. Just the consistency towards this will yield, you, will yield you so many results that it just... I think... I can't say they're going to be unprecedented for certain people because some people just have shit ideas. But like for the most part, I think especially if you're just a blue belt or even a white belt and you're just really engaged and you like watching film. Um, this is a perfect white belt to so like watching film. This is absolutely fantastic and I can... I can get into another thing of where, or like, white bots who like watching film, like, kind of what to do and how to improve. But, um, but yeah, this is kind of like, this is essentially what I've been, I've been doing this for a while now, especially, I've been heavily leaning into it for the past few months, and I've got several different, like, um, like, mental frameworks and strategies to kind of weaponize this, but, uh, I'm gonna leave it right there for now, because I think this is fucking, like, this is, like, 20 five minutes long at this day. I think this is fucking fantastic. And um yeah, I'm gonna cut this into little bits. Let me know what you think. I think this is fucking amazing. I think I think this idea will can change Jiu Jitsu if people actually stick to it consistently and will lead to so much more improvement in the overall Jiu Jitsu community. And um yeah, thank you for listening. This is my fucking stream of consciousness consciousness, I guess you could call it. Thank you for listening to my rant, my fucking I won't call it nonsense. It's fucking very good information. But um like my 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 thoughts on jiu-jitsu and i really i really take a lot of pride and value in this and i don't think anyone else thinks like this i think there's a very few select people maybe um, maybe people like the only ones i can think of are people that i know because i've exposed these ideas to them all the similar personalities to me so yeah that's it thank you